The next project we're going to be talking about is the altered grid project. Sometimes you'll hear me refer to this as a distortion project. Basically, you are going to take a realistic photograph um, and you are going to take that photograph and you're going to use a grid system to alter the appearance of that picture. The point of it is distorting the original picture. Um, I want you to follow along with me in your handout on this um, reading. Frequently, artists use distortion or abstraction to convey feelings and a particular mood because often things can be expressed more successfully in forms that are personalized rather than through the use of realism. Ironically, by taking a reality and changing it, artists are often able to create things that seem more real, due largely in part because of the experience expressiveness allowed in distortion or abstraction. Distortion is a change of reality's depiction, altering it in a way that one is able to still recognize the item itself, but notices it changes in some matter. One of the most important parts of this project is going to be that your picture is extremely distorted. If your distortion is only slight, meaning you only have like, you know, one eye is slightly larger than another, you're going to notice um, that it might look like that person can't draw rather than you did the distortion on purpose. I want you to look at a few examples down here of this project. This shows the original and how it was distorted. This one you can tell right away how distorted it is. Um, this one down here is also a really good example. And these are a few examples of how your grid can help you distort your picture. Okay. Some vocabulary that goes along with this. Distortion. In the art world, a distortion is a change made by an artist to a size, shape, or visual character of a form to express an idea, convey a feeling, or enhance visual impact. Uh, abstract is another term that goes along with this project art that does not attempt to represent external reality, but seeks to achieve its effect using shapes, forms, colors, and textures. Uh, gridding, you're gonna be using a grid for this project, a network of horizontal and perpendicular lines, uniformly spaced, used for enlarging a picture or drawing. The only thing that we're changing about this definition is we're not uniformly spacing our lines for our grid. Transfer, to be moved from one place to another, Enlarge to make larger, so hopefully your pictures are going to be pretty small and you will be enlarging them to a large piece of paper. Shading, the representation of different values of color or light and dark in a painting or drawing. Value, degrees of lightness or darkness in a drawing. Pointillism, I included these because these are different ways you can tackle shading and achieving value, so I just throw them in as an extra um, review for you guys. Pointillism, tiny dots randomly spaced to achieve a look of shading when concentrated together. Um, hatching, cross-hatching to make mark or shade with two or more intersecting lines. And tone, the intensity of a color, it is the most basic form of shade. The supplies you're going to need for this project are listed here. An 18 by 24 piece of white paper. So I'm gonna help. I'm gonna hope that the picture that you choose to draw for this project is rectangular because it needs to be the same um, shape, roughly, as the paper you're using. So I'm gonna be giving you 18 by 24 white paper. You're um, gonna be using pencil for this, and you're gonna be um, hopefully using a drawing set. But if you don't have one, that is not the end of the world. Um, a ruler, definitely. A uh, sheet protector if you want to make sure that your picture doesn't get ruined, your original. And a fine point sharpie because you're going to need something to mark your original grid lines onto that sheet protector or over top of your original picture so that you can see it. Pencil doesn't really show up very well. 